Make it personal. It's personal. It starts with me. If all you want is success, and that's all you see, you will not have it. The end game, the aim, the target, is about consistently following a guideline. And so if all you want is the success, if all you want is a trophy, but you don't want a story, a process, if you don't want to be made into something, then you've, you've already missed it. You've already failed. You've already tanked. And so once you get this, everything changes. You want influence? Come on, where are your values behind the scenes? What do your habits look like behind the scenes? Come on, what kind of work are you putting in behind the scenes? Come on, write it again. Come on, believe it again. Come on, sing again, record the song again. Come on, it starts with where you are and where you're going. Can you look ahead? Can you stretch forth? Can you condition yourself? Can you prepare yourself for the next thing? Come on, what did God put in you? Release it to the world. The reason why you don't have what you want is because you are not Hungry enough! Pain is inevitable and it is unavoidable. And when we talk about this underdog mentality, the underdog is just a man or a woman who has made up their mind. They are no longer going to live in their setbacks. They are no longer going to live in your reality. Your reality of me says I'm not enough. Your reality of me says I can't do this. Your reality of me says you won't finish today. My reality says all I have is all I need. I'm not living in my setback any longer. I'm moving forward. If it's going to be personal, make it personal. Don't just be great in public, be great in private. If you can see it in your head, you can hold it in your hands. But the question I want to ask you is, are you committed? So if you're listening to me right now and there's anything in your life that is defeating you, if there's anything in your life that seems like an improbable feat, you got to smell blood. Once you get that scent like a hound dog, you get that scent. You see what is possible. You see what you are capable of. In the face of adversity, in the face of challenges, in the face of everybody that says you are not enough, you're not tall enough, you're not big enough, you're not wide enough, you're not fast enough, it's in that very moment that the dreams got to get bigger than the disappointment, than the fear, than the anxiety, than the stress, than the overwhelm. It's got to get bigger, the dream. Once that dream gets bigger and you get a scent for that dream, you start to smell that dream. There's nothing on planet Earth that can stop you. You become armed and dangerous. You are the most dangerous individual on planet Earth. Everything in my life breathes and eats this purpose that I have. I gotta make it personal, it's, it's, it starts with me. When it starts with me, it ends with me. I don't know where you are in your game of life. You may be in your third quarter, your first quarter, your, your second half, and this time it's gotta be personal. See, last time you were just running through the plays. Last time you were just running the songs that you rehearsed in rehearsal. Last time you were just going through the motions and you got numb, come on, and you got tired and weary and now you're broken and bitter and angry because you lost. And I'm just wondering if you're courageous enough, bold enough, if you have enough faith, come on, if you have enough inside of you resilience to come back to the scene and make it personal. You are gonna have to push, 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 push because they said you can't do it. They said you don't have what it takes to make the investments. They said you don't have what it takes to lose the weight. They said you don't have what it takes to hang on to your marriage. Everybody has been counting out. Everybody has been doubted. The underdog is not a person who doesn't feel pain, doubt, and fear. The underdog is a person that turns that pain, that doubt, that fear into their fuel. Your story is not your fortress, your story is your fuel. If you came from a place where you had nothing, that's everything that you need. Nine times out of 10, the underdog always comes out with the win because the underdog was more hungry. The wolf that is on the hill is never as hungry as the wolf that is climbing the hill. The underdog is still trying to prove himself. The underdog is still trying to tell the world I can do this. 
in the face of adversity, in the face of challenges, in the face of everybody that says you are not enough, you're not tall enough, you're not big enough, you're not wide enough, you're not fast enough. It's in that very moment that the dreams got to get bigger than the disappointment, than the fear, than the anxiety, than the stress, than the overwhelm. It's got to get bigger, the dream. Once that dream gets bigger and you get a scent for that dream, you start to smell that dream, there's nothing on planet Earth that can stop you. You become armed and dangerous. You are the most dangerous individual on planet Earth. When you doubt the underdog, it's like music to his ears. Tell me I'm not good enough. Tell me I'm not strong enough. Tell me I won't finish. There is this intrinsic emotion, this instinct. You have just awakened the lion in me. And so an underdog is just somebody who refused to live in the setback. It is a person who rebels against your reality. Your reality of me is that I'm not enough. Your reality of me is that I'm not qualified. Your reality of me is that I'm not quick enough. I'm not fast enough. I'm not tall enough. I'm not linear enough. This is your reality. My reality of me is that all I have is all I need. I'm coming after everything you said I couldn't have. If you're gonna come back from the setback, the number one thing you have to do is make up your mind that you are no longer going to live in the pain of the past. The underdog is a person that comes out on the playing field and says, okay, I've been in this place of pain my whole life. I've gone without for so long. This is the day you make up in your mind where I will take the throne. If you're listening to me right now and you've been an underdog in your relationships, if you've been an underdog in the weight room, if you've been an underdog in life, if you've been an underdog financially, I'm talking to that person who grew up without a father. I'm talking to that person who grew up without a mother. I'm talking to that person who didn't grow up with handouts. I'm talking to that person who maybe if you did grow up with a little bit of handouts, but maybe you were misunderstood and you were overlooked and you were undervalued and you were mishandled and misguided. I'm talking to that person person that is acquainted with pain. I'm talking to that person that knows what it's like to come from nothing. And so you literally have nothing to lose. And the only thing that's in your hand is a dream. The only thing that's in your head is I have what it takes to get to the top of that hill because I am not the wolf on the hill. I am the wolf climbing the hill. I have nothing to lose. You are going to have to push, 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 because they said you can't do it. They said you don't have what it takes to make the investments. They said you don't have what it takes to lose the weight. They say you don't have what it takes to hang on to your marriage. Everybody has been counting out. Everybody has been doubted. The underdog is not a person who doesn't feel pain, doubt, and fear. The underdog is a person that turns that pain, that doubt, that fear into their fuel. That's everything that you need. Let yourself go, fall free into it. Step into it, you are worthy. Come on, your gate, your presence, your authenticity. Come on, you're special. Poverty is a state of being. Everybody wants income and influence, but we don't want to impact. In order to see income and influence, I've got to impact. The poverty that we experience is a symptom of something that has happened on the inside of us. These ideas, this way of living was passed down to us. And so number one, you got to become aware that something's off on the inside of you. There is a rewire required in order to go to that next level in our finances. Most wealthy people started with an idea before they had the dollar. So my question for you today is, What's your idea? What's your calling? What's your product? How can we eat from the economy and not contribute to the economy? Wealth is not coming to you. Wealth comes from you. As you contribute to economy, as you drive humanity forward, you get rewarded based upon your contribution. Everybody you know that's wealthy is investing and creating. One of the chief problems with poor people is that they don't want to contribute and they trade time for money. And the only thing that they contribute is enough to get a check. And so that's why when they get the check, they spend the check on entertainment. They spend the check on stuff that's not going to make them any money. Wealthy people turn their dollars 
into soldiers. They put their money to work. They invest in systems. They invest in programs. They invest in real estate. They invest in opportunities that will make them more money. Poor people get paid. They live check to check and they spend that money on entertainment because they want to break from working for the nine to five. So they have a budget for entertainment, but they have no budget for education. Occupy, occupy. Take up your space. Turn the city upside down. Impact lives. From the person on the elevator, in the parking lot, to the stages of destiny. You have a calling. Once you identify it, all of a sudden, everything begins to change. Jeff Bezos said, you can have a job, you can have a career, or you can have a calling. And he says, if you can find that calling, bam, everything begins to change. You can make $100,000 a year and still have a poor mentality and spend all your money on entertainment. And so payday isn't really payday, it's transfer day because you're just getting paid and you're giving it to the bill collector and you're not investing in anything that's going to make you money. You're not investing in stocks. You're not investing in real estate. You're not launching a product. You're not adding value to the marketplace. Wealthy people are invested people. Wealthy people are adding value to the marketplace to drive humanity forward. I gotta put something out from Jeff Bezos to Mark Zuckerberg to Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, every athlete, every athlete, every producer, every filmmaker, every musician, every singer. The list goes on. They are contributing something to humanity. They are a part of the driving force of the economy. What I need you to realize today is that money, zip codes, area codes, cars, and clothes is not the only evidence of wealth. You can change your mindset, your mentality, your methodology, shift your habits right now and experience a measure of abundance and wealth. And so break out of this scarcity mindset that it's too hard, that I don't have enough. Identify what mindsets and programs are keeping you broke and broken. How will you personally drive humanity forward in the coming years of your life? What are the consequences that you will have to pay if you stay where you are. Let me ask you a better question. Where has your operating system, the way that you function, the way that you move, the way that you, that you think, the way that you respond, where has it gotten you? If you are listening to me and you are not where you are supposed to be financially, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, then what you have done thus far has not served you. And if it has, it has brought you as far as you're going to go. What will you create? What will you step into? How will you collaborate? What can you pioneer? How can you blaze a trail? A legacy of a wealth mentality. If you're going to see wealth in your life, if you're going to get rich, as they say, then you're going to have to level up in your internal programming. You're going to have to see differently. You're going to have to speak differently. You're going to have to navigate and negotiate differently. You're going to have to collaborate. You're going to have to create, build something, start something, get out of the past, break out of the shame, the guilt, and the defeat, and step into this brilliance where you are connected and you are engaged and you are fully aware of the future and you can create something that is meaningful. Because if you can discover the calling, you're gonna see the impact, the influence, and the income. Wealthy people are focused people. Wealthy people have discovered the meaning, the why, like why they do what they do. So everything needs to come into alignment. I want good money, I need to have a good attitude. I need to stop doing what I hate like I hate it. You could change everything right now, right on your job, right in your car. Why are you brushing your teeth? Why are you pushing weights listening to me? Everything can change right now if you begin to, to live from this place of abundance and appreciation. 
and gratitude and generosity. The problem with many of us is that we're doing the wrong things with the money we have. We're not investing, we're spending. Wealthy people invest, poor people spend. Poor people think that the only way they can make money is to work hard and long hours and overtime. Wealthy people say that my money is the direct result of the positive and transformational experience I bring to the lives of other people. So I just want to ask you this question. What are you going to produce? What are you going to build? What are you going to create? How are you going to collaborate? How are you going to network? How are you going to add value to somebody else's life? This is the question that I ask across all platforms and almost every talk. What is your calling? Everything we do needs to elevate and it starts with you. you've been an underdog in your relationships, if you've been an underdog in the weight room, if you've been an underdog in life, if you've been an underdog financially, I'm talking to that person who grew up without a father, I'm talking to that person who grew up without a mother, I'm talking to that person who didn't grow up with handouts, I'm talking to that person who maybe if you did grow up with a little bit of handouts, but maybe you were misunderstood and you were overlooked and you were undervalued and you were mishandled and misguided. You got a dream to buy a house. You got a dream for better relationships. You got a dream to, to win a fight. You got a dream to get your family out of the hood. You got a dream to lose weight. I mean, whatever that dream is, whatever you have, that goal, that improbable feat, once you get it set, once you smell that, once you get a feel for it, a taste of it, and, and the underdog is, is an individual who, who refuses to live in the dark. They refuse to remain in obscurity. They refuse to live in stress and overwhelm and anxiety. They are somebody who is tired. Like when you come to the end of yourself, you got to get tired. Like you have to get tired. Tired. Something inside of you has to snap. You got to get tired of being broke. When you get tired of being coined the loser, being coined not enough, being overlooked and undervalued and underpaid, you got to get tired of that. When you get tired, that's when you win. The underdog is a person that comes out on the playing field and says, okay, I've been in this place of pain my whole life. I've gone without for so long. This is the day you make up in your mind where I will take the throne. I'm talking to that person that is acquainted with pain. I'm talking to that person that knows what it's like to come from nothing. And so you literally have nothing to lose. And the only thing that's in your hand is a dream. The only thing that's in your head is I have what it takes to get to the top of that hill because I am not the wolf on the hill. I am the wolf climbing the hill. I have nothing to lose. Counted out, overlooked, undervalued, misguided, betrayed, somebody who has been really dishonored, disrespected, somebody who has lost everything, who people stop believing in, is a very desperate person. They're climbing a hill, they're trying to achieve a dream. And when you are desperate, you are very dangerous. And a dangerous man or woman is somebody who is a disruptor. They don't play by the rules, they are coming for blood. Tell me I'm not strong enough. Tell me I won't finish. There is this intrinsic emotion, this instinct. You have just awakened the lion in me because they said you can't do it. They said you don't have what it takes to make the investments. They said you don't have what it takes to lose the weight. They said you don't have what it takes to hang on to your marriage. Everybody has been counting out. Everybody has been doubted. The underdog is not a person who doesn't feel pain, doubt, and fear. The underdog is a person that turns that pain, that doubt, that fear into their fuel. If you came from a place where you had nothing, that's everything that you need.
everybody wants a piece of the pie. Okay, everybody wants a piece of the pie in any facet of life, in every arena you walk in, there's pie. And the, the thing is, is that that pie doesn't get any bigger. The pie never gets any bigger. It's the disciplined, desperate, dangerous mentality of an individual that says, I'm gonna push whoever I gotta push out of my way to get my piece of the pie. Those are the people that get the pie because the pie doesn't get any bigger and the pie does not pursue you. You have to go after it. So whatever it is that you're going after, whatever it is you feel as though you've been destined to do, are you willing to push whoever, whatever out of your way to get your piece of the pie? So if you're listening to me right now and there's anything in your life that is defeating you, if there's anything in your life that seems like an improbable feat, you gotta smell blood. Once you get that scent like a hound dog, you get that scent, you see what is possible, you see what you are capable of. In the face of adversity, in the face of challenges, in the face of everybody that says you are not enough, you're not tall enough, you're not big enough, you're not wide enough, you're not fast enough, it's in that very moment that the dreams gotta get bigger than the disappointment, than the fear, than the anxiety, than the stress, than the overwhelm. It's got to get bigger, the dream. Once that dream gets bigger and you get a scent for that dream, you start to smell that dream. There's nothing on planet Earth that can stop you. You become armed and dangerous. You are the most dangerous individual on planet Earth. And so an underdog is just somebody who refused to live in the setback. It is a person who rebels against your reality. Your reality of me is that I'm not enough. Your reality of me is that I'm not qualified. Your reality of me is that I'm not quick enough. I'm not fast enough. I'm not tall enough. I'm not linear enough. This is your reality. My reality of me is that all I have is all I need. I'm coming after everything you said I couldn't have. If you're gonna come back from the setback, the number one thing you have to do is make up your mind that you are no longer going to live in the pain of the past. Pain is inevitable and it is unavoidable. And when we talk about this underdog mentality, the underdog is just a man or a woman who has made up their mind. They are no longer going to live in their setbacks. They are no longer going to live in your reality. Your reality of me says I'm not enough. Your reality of me says I can't do this. Your reality of me says you won't finish today. My reality says all I have is all I need. I'm not living in my setback any longer. I'm moving forward. When we talk about a dog mentality, the dog scrambles, the dog barks, the dog runs after whatever it wants. When a dog is hungry, move out of his way. This is coming for blood. And the reason why you don't have what you want is because you are not hungry enough. You are gonna have to push, 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 push. Nine times out of 10, the underdog always comes out with the win because the underdog was more hungry. The wolf that is on the hill is never as hungry as the wolf that is climbing the hill. The underdog is still trying to prove himself. The underdog is still trying to tell the world, I can do this. And the underdog is, is an individual who refuses to live in the dark.